Hi everyone, it is Carrie Bisplonis from Reset Brain and Body here with Mental Health Mondays for you. Today we are talking about, well, how to talk to kids, about the hard things happening in the world. This last year you may have had a lot of practice in this arena or a lot of avoidance and anxiety and just saying, I don't know how to talk to my kids about anything that's going on or feeling like you're botching it the whole time. So here's the thing, I first just wanna tell you, even just having any conversation with your kids about current events, about social justice and injustices is important. Even if you feel like you're fumbling your way through it, it's important to have a dialogue and express your own vulnerability. The first tip here is simply to be vulnerable yourself, to recognize where you have work to do, where you have some blind spots that you need to correct, where you have some opportunity to listen to podcasts, to read some books, to ask questions, and truly just engage in a way where you are a learner, a student in this type of landscape where you recognize you don't have all the answers. So give yourself some grace if you are on this path and you are recognizing that, wow, okay, maybe I have a lot of unconscious bias that I didn't know I had, or wow, there are some topics that we just simply avoid because it makes me uncomfortable, or wow, when we're with our relatives and they say something, I don't speak up, why don't I? So you doing your own work as a parent is instrumental to you being able to then have the ability to have conversations with your kids about the hard stuff that's going on in the world. And the hard stuff that's been going on for, let's, we know this, decades, centuries, more than centuries. And so again, first start with the vulnerability of just doing your own work. But when you're talking to kids specifically, one of the best things to do is just to gauge where they're at, check in with them. Um, I have this colleague who asks his daughter, and she's, I think she's about five now, asks his daughter, what color is your skin? And he'll ask her like once a month, every few weeks. And he's been asking her that same question ever since she was two or so. And he's simply just gauging where she's at. Some days she'll be like, purple <laughs> and and eventually he knows that her answer is going to be something deeper her answer is going to be maybe layered with some connotations or some ways in which she's viewing herself and so what's really important is that he's having that conversation now and checking in with her okay where is she at how is she seeing herself in the world and that's really important to keep asking our kid question our kids questions simple questions like what have you been hearing that's going on in the world how do you feel about the things that you have been hearing? Or maybe even broader, like what is a protest, right? What is race? What is nationality? What is immigration? Just having these thought starters where you are able to check in with them and just have education around it. And this brings me to the next point is that it's important to talk about facts and not opinions. Right, so if someone's asking, oh, you know, why, why are those people protesting? You know, it's not a matter of, well, some people feel that they're not being treated as fairly as other people. Well, that's opinion. And what we want to give our kids is fact. The simple fact is, is that certain groups of people are not treating other groups of people equitably and with respect. Certain people are being bullied based on what they look like. Again, it's not about opinions. It's not about you know, how people are feeling because that, that creates too much gray because at the end of the day, it is fact. So when you're checking in with them and you're having these conversations and you're bringing up points for education, talk about fact. And there are some beautiful resources on Instagram. Um, one of my favorite accounts is So You Want to Talk About. And it has like every tough topic on there that you be like, oh, I might have some of my own questions about this. Use that as a point of entry with your children. Again, education. Also, teaching empathy. And really, you know, when anyone ever asks me these questions about like, how do we talk to our kids and what should we say? It starts at the dinner table. It starts in the way that you interact as a family. It starts with how you allow the siblings to treat each other. It starts with how you address your kids' feelings. You know, one of the things that bristles me more than anything else is when a kid hurts themselves or they fall down or a baby, you know, knocks their face on a stool. 
And people automatically say, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're okay, you're okay. It makes me so angry because we don't know that. And we're already at such a young age dismissing their feelings. And so it's more important to say, are you okay? How did that feel? How did that make you feel? Because you are practicing empathy then with your own child. You're not just automatically assuming that they're fine and moving past it. You're giving them space to assess for themselves how they feel. And so it's important to not only have that dialogue with our child directly, but then encourage them to have that same conversation with other people. So how does it feel when something's unfair, when something feels unfair? How do you think someone else might feel when they're not allowed to do something that other people are allowed to do? How might it feel to be told that you're not allowed to join a club based on who you love? Having these conversations from an empathy standpoint, right? And a lot of times kids as young as three can understand these concepts about just basic humanity, love, respect, fairness, and feelings. The thing that we have to know about children is that they know feelings. They speak in the language of feelings. Their rational mind about judgment and executive functioning and decision making really doesn't establish itself until they're seven or eight years old. And so when you're wanting to have these conversations with children that are even younger than that, when you can't talk about you know, the facts and, and you know, really rational talk, well, you need to talk about feelings. And so that's when the empathy comes in. That's when asking about feelings. How do you feel? How do you think someone else might feel? And so that they can start cultivating more of that empathy as they look at the world around them. So in addition to that, we have to validate and help process with them. A lot of times we think that we need to shelter our children from our own emotions. But when you're watching the news, or gosh, this whole year when you've been stressed and, and it's been feeling really tough and how you're going you're gonna to navigate your own life, Include them in on that, right? Now, there's something to be said about allowing our children to feel safe and protective and grounded and having calm parents is a part of that, but you can show feelings in a calm way. You can talk to your children about what's hard for you calmly. What's unsafe is when we're reactive, when we are unpredictable in our emotions, but when we create space to have genuine empathetic conversations and validating conversations about our own feelings, well, that creates safety and it creates a sacred space within the home. You know, I have a lot of clients that tell their children, okay, this is the, this is the safe chair. Whatever you say in this chair, I will not judge, I will not dismiss, and I will give you your floor. And you can say whatever you want and you can trust me that I will listen and that there will be no punishment for what you tell me when you're in that chair. And this is a beautiful example of allowing children to come into their feelings and to be able to safely process. And so if you don't have that chair in your home, maybe you need to first establish it for yourself. Okay, where is there a place in my home, in my life, where I can sit and be real with my emotions? Can you and your partner do that with each other? Can you talk to each other without judgment, without bias? The way in which we judge those closest to us and the way in which we judge ourselves is how we judge the world. And so we first have to be really accountable to not have judgment within our own home. Because gosh, your kids pick up on that. And they'll start judging everything around them and they'll judge themselves so much. And so having that sacred safe space within the home is vitally important. So you need to be able to cultivate that with, with them, process things with them. If you have the news on and something is hard to see, talk about it. Wow, that's really making me feel sad. I'm feeling really overwhelmed. How do you feel? And the last thing is to keep these conversations going and turn things into action. And so making sure that there's representation in your home amongst books and experiences, that you're going to museums that have diversity, that you're watching shows that show diversity and inclusion, that you are encountering different walks of life everywhere you go. So if you're going to the grocery store, the farmer's market, again, to some sort of outdoor activity, embracing differences versus shying away. 
It can be as simple by what takeout you order, <laughs> sampling different foods from different areas of the world, bringing in different culture as far as artwork, clothing, shopping local, supporting local businesses, writing letters to our local politicians on what we think we need to have change, doing small things that role model to your children that you want to see differences in the world and you want to make a difference in the world and you're not shying away, that you keep these conversations going. So to summarize, first and foremost, learn where your growing edges are, keep learning, keep being a student, keep having courageous conversations within yourself and recognizing that you probably have a lot of work to do and that is okay as long as you're moving forward and doing the work and acknowledging it. Checking in with your children, giving them an opportunity for education, using resources like So You Want to Talk About to bring up some of these harder subjects and put them on the dinner table and say, okay, here we go, let's talk. How does this feel? Talking about facts and not opinions. Using empathy, examples of empathy, teaching empathy within the home, making sure that there's no judgment within the home and keeping the conversation going. There is a beautiful poem by Cleo Wade that we actually have in one of our offices here. I will share it. And to me, it summarizes exactly what we all can be doing as parents and how to have these conversations and keep them going. I will also share a resource with you in that I'm doing a talk tomorrow night with an academy in the local area in Troy, and we're having a discussion with a leader on diversity, inclusion, and equity, and we are talking about the psychological impacts, age developmentally appropriate conversations to have. I will include the link to that so you can sign up for that webinar. But please continue to ask questions, not only to us, but those around you. Really appreciate you having these conversations with me. Continue to submit things to the Ask Carrie Forum so that we can continue to have conversations that are relevant to you and your homes. Thank you.